the fields one algebraic uh, systems and in particular our emphasis will be on uh, finite fields because uh, as the real life applications the there are numerous uh, uh, application areas uh, that where finite fields are used in particular that uh, uh, cryptography and the coding theory where mainly the uh, finite fields are used. So, first we read that uh, the field. Since already we have uh, read the number of algebraic systems and there we have seen that a num the general properties that um, they hold. Now, we based on those properties that we, we try to define the algebraic system. Uh, field. So, if field F and normally a field is also with two uh, binary operations like ring. So, we if uh, we write that as if the addition and the uh, multiplication is a set of elements with two binary operations like ring that we have read last year. Say addition and multiplication, but as already we have read we have seen that this addition and multiplication may not be the, the ordinary addition and application um, multiplication. And such that if A, B, C are the elements of F, then the and the following axioms are satisfied. If we remember that the these axioms are the properties that are the mainly the uh, closure property, the associative, the um, uh, identity element must be there and when we are considering two binary operations then distributive property must be hold. So, if uh, we see those properties say for um, addition we can write that means for addition operation. the properties are say closure then it is it has the associative then it has uh, additive identity should be there
then it must be uh, commutative. and additive inverse exist. So, this is when we consider the addition operation or and addition operation that is my here we have considered it is plus. Now, similarly, if I consider the because field on field there are uh, two operations are there. So, if I consider the multiplication operation for multiplication operation. then. I should have the closure that means, it should be closed under multiplication then associative with respect to the multiplication operation then multiplicative identity should be there. Now, the distributive property should be there so it should be distributive. Now, if the multiplication is commutative then it can be a commutative ring. Now, we can also uh, see that uh, integral domain that means, if it is multiplicative identity and the uh, no, de no divisors that means, if I add another property we have seen that multiplicative identity and no divisors, no 0 divisors no 0 divisors then it can it is the integral domain. Then it is so we have seen that if it is say additive property we can write that it is a multiplicative m. So, we if it is a 1 to a 6 it holds then I can write m 6 to m 7 and m 9 m 10 then it is I can tell this is commutative commutative ring. That we have read last day and now if I add two more that m 8 that multiplicative identity and the m 11 the no 0 divisors then I can tell that this is the uh, integral domain this is the integral domain. Now, see uh, for when we have considered the addition operation we have considered that additive inverse, but when we have considered all the multiplication operation the properties which are uh, must be obeyed um, under multiplication say here closure associative and multiplicative identity for integral domain it can be commutative and distributive when both addition and uh, um, 
multiplication we have considered. So, distributive for both addition and multiplication, but multiplicative inverse we have not considered. So, here for the field that in addition that must multiplicative inverse it must uh, satisfied. So, we can write the additional thing that m 12 is the multiplicative inverse exist. So, over the properties satisfied by the commutative rim and the integral domain, if we see that multiplicative inverse exist, then it is a uh, field. So, uh, what is uh, multiplicative inverse? That means, if the if a belongs to f the field and say multiplicative identity is E this is, e is the multiplicative identity so, which is for normal multiplication or ordinary multiplication it is 1. or ordinary multiplication identity is 1. Then there must exist an element A inverse such that A inverse in multipli multiplication if I take e equal to A to A inverse equal to the multiplicative identity E equal to may be equal to 1 for ordinary multiplication. So, this A inverse must exist for the field and then we call that uh, this is a field. Now, if we remember and when, when it is finite field, finite field that if the order of the field is finite, that means the number of elements in the set are finite. So, it is finite field if the order of the field is finite. And order means we know order is the size of the set that means the number of set of elements. Okay. And um, as I already mentioned that infinite field is of very less use actually the real life applications like cryptography coding theory the finite fields are used. So, mainly uh, uh, in our uh, lectures we will be uh, concentrating on the finite fields and their properties. So, if we remember the uh, in the lecture that or when we have read the ring we have taken some uh, examples that uh, addition and multiplication modulo we have taken addition and multiplication modulo 8 one examples we have seen and what we have shown that um, under multiplication modulo 8 under multiplication modulo 8 it is a, a ring but uh, the when we have seen the operations the addition and multiplication modulo 8, then we have seen that it is the multiplicative inverse does not exist for all the elements. If we remember the what will be the set when we are taking the modulo 8, 
normally we, we have read that z. Now, we uh, give the notation that it is a z 8 is the set. What is z 8? Because if I take the modulo 8 that means it is nothing but the remainder when some number is divided by 8. So, remainder can be 0 to 7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, this is the set z 8 and we have seen that z 8 and then the uh, addition modulo uh, 8 and the multiplication modulo 8 we have taken this here plus and star at the addition and multiplication modulo 8 Now, when we have uh, uh, written that all the uh, uh, or tabulated all the additions and the multiplication modulo 8, we have seen that if we remember that only since these are my set elements. So, some set A I can, if I write that this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then we got that um, additive inverse, we got that additive inverse. Additive inverse for 0 it is 0 because for additive identity is uh, 0, this is 7, this is 6, 5 since modulo 8 modulo 8 is 8 modulo 8 is 0. So, this is 4, 3, 2, 1. When we have taken the same thing for the or multiplicative inverse, multiplicative inverse, here multiplicative is that modulo 8 multiplication then we have seen that for 0 normally we, we do not get because 0 then there should, should not be 0 divisors. Then if for 1 we get it is 1, for 2 we did not get any multiplicative inverse, for 3 it is 3, for 4 we did not get, for 5 it is 5 for 6 we did not get an inverse, for 7 it is 7. If we remember again then it is for say 5 this is we know that 5 into 5 modulo 8 modulo 8 equal to 25 mod 8 and this equal to 1 remainder is 1. So, similar way we can get the 1 and 7. Now, see and the conclusion we have made that if this A, if we remember that conclusion was that if A and N when we are taking modulo N or N multiplication, then A and N are relatively prime, are relatively prime, then we get the then multiplicative inverse exist. for z n, this is for z n. So, and since here 2, 4 and 6 are not relatively prime to 8, so we did not get, but here say 3, 1, 3, 5, 7, they are relatively prime to 8, relatively prime to 8. So, multiplicative inverse exist. So, that is why uh, the um, uh, ring under mod modulo addition or modulo multiplication or if we take the modulo 8 multiplication that means z 8, z 8 was not a ring or z 8 is not a ring. Now, 
if it is a field that multiplicative inverse must exist. So, if I consider the n as a prime, so we consider consider n as a prime, then what will happen? Say if it is z n or I, I write n equal to p normally that is the convention. So, we write z p. So, if it is z p then z p the set will be 0, 1, 2, 3 and up to p minus 1. Then what is the relation between all these uh, elements to p? Since p is a prime, since p is prime, so all the elements of z p are relatively prime to p except 0 we do not normally we consider that 0. So, relatively prime to p that means I can take if a belongs to a belongs to z p other than 0 then a and n are relatively prime a and n are relatively prime so a and p are relatively prime then now if i do the module of p addition and multiplication module of p addition and multiplication that means the set I take the z p and then plus and last day we have given this notation as the star that modulo addition under this this is plus and star plus and star or modulo p or mod p addition mod p addition and multiplication. then then it must be a it must be a field so uh, we have considered the uh, p and norm z p and so that the set becomes 0 to p minus 1 since p is prime. So, all the elements are relatively prime and then the according to that uh, example the, uh, we have seen that it must be we must get the uh, multiplicative inverse. Now, we take one example that where we take the z 7 that means we consider we consider p equal to 7 and the plus and star we give the modulo 7 modulo 7 addition and multiplication. Now, if we tabulate the addition modulo 7, so we first see the addition modulo 7.
it will be only 7 elements. and modulo 7. So, if we remember it will be same because addition will be similar 6 plus 1 7. So, modulo 7 it is 0. Again, 7 modulo 7. It is 5, 6, now it will be modulo 7. So, it will be giving 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, addition modulo will be 7. Now, addition modulo 7, this table will be. Now, if I consider the multiplication modulo 7 on ZP, Now, since 0 multiplied by any element will be 0, now it will be similarly it is multiplied by 1, this is because multiplicative identity is 1. Now, now I have to take that a into b modulo 7, so 2 into 2, 2 into 2 4, 4 modulo 7 is 4, 6 modulo 7 is 6 but 8 modulo 7 will be 1. Similarly, 10 modulo 7 will be 3 and 12 modulo 7 is 5. So, what last we have done modulo 8, now we are doing modulo 7. Then it is 0, 3, 6 modulo 7, 2, then it is 5, 12, 15, so it is 1. Now, 18, so this becomes 4. Now, 0, 4, 0, 4, 8, so it is 1, then 12, it is 5, 16, it is 2, 16 modulo 7, remainder 2, then 20, so it is 6, then uh, it is 3, 5, 5 modulo 7, 5, 3, 1, 6, 25, so it is 4, then 30, so it is 2, 6 modulo 6, 0, 6 modulo 12, so it is 5, 4, 24, then 30, so 2, then 36, so it will be 1. Now, we, we observe some of the scene. First thing is except 0, we are getting multiplicative identity for each element 1 because since multiplicative identity is 1, so we are getting a a inverse equal to 1 for each or for all a belongs to f z p here it is I, I, I should write that for a belongs to z 7. So, for each element of z 7 I am getting and this is for other than other than 0. So, multiplicative inverse exists. 
since lastly we have seen that for or when we have discussed that multiplicative inverse exists for other properties when the we have taken that addition modulo uh, 8 and multiplication multiplication modulo 8 that for all properties that we have all the axioms that we have uh, defined for uh, field should follow that closure associative additive identity it is a commutative and then for uh, since it is a commutative ring we have shown that it is also integral domain. So, up to all these all these properties for addition this added a 1 to a 6 for multiplication for m 6 to m 7 commutative ring then it is integral domain everything is satisfied. Now, what we show that this only this uh, m 12 that multiplicative inverse that now we show that when we are taking that a prime number that means so in z 7 7 is a prime then multiplicative inverse exist since all other all the elements of z p or in this case z 7 it is relatively prime to uh, p. So, we can we conclude that our uh, under under addition modulo p addition and multiplication these are two binary operations multiplication modulo p where p is prime the on jet p jet p is a set 0 to p minus 1 is a field is a field and this is a very good observation and based on that actually we will be forming that prime field. So, normally when p is prime we call that it is a it is a prime field it is a prime field okay. is a prime field. So, on prime field. so jet p is a is a prime field and operation is and we will we'll mainly the next lectures will be um, considering this prime field and the um, extension field that is z p and some z p n that means when this is p to the power n the set of elements are 0 to p to the power n. So, mainly our focus is on these two fields we will be discussing. So, in this lecture we have seen that how very basic uh, concepts that how the z p um, with the two binary operations the modulo operations addition modulo addition modulo p and multiplicative modulo, modulo multiplication modulo p how they are forming a field and how we are defining the prime field and then this p to the power n we call that is extension field and mainly we will be concentrating on the studies of these two fields. <laughs>